when you send a radio guy out to talk in front of real humans, it's a shock. Because I spend most of my time behind a microphone. So first things first, you all had lunch, right? So here's what we need to do because some of you are slipping into the carbohydrate coma. Will you all stand up for a second, please? Participate fully. Clap your hands as loud as you can. Come on. Wait. <laughs> Sit down. Here's why I do that. Number one is I'm not kidding about the carbohydrate coma thing. I had a sandwich backstage that looked like three bricks stacked. Incredible. The other part is no matter what I say, I already got a standing ovation. <laughs> That's how I work it. 1969 was an incredible year for me. I was turning 10 that year. You remember 10? It's kind of hard to remember after about 40 summers slip by, but I remember 10, 1969, because my beloved Chicago Cubs were going to win the World Series. You can laugh, I still do. <laughs> anyway, uh, 1969 rolls around, the Cubs are going to win the World Series. I spend most of my summer in left field at Wrigley Field with a little yellow hard hat on, yelling for my boys. And I remember a specific day in July of 1969. It was July 20th, actually, and there was a couple big things happening that day. The Cubs were playing the Phillies in a doubleheader. Huge in my world. Number two, my dad was having his monthly poker game at our house, and that meant coin in my pocket. <laughs> and here's why. All the old guys would come over to... Now, this is before poker was like a spectator sport on television. You know, World Series of Poker. Those guys were doing it years ago. So what would happen is they'd play poker, and I'd put a big tub of ice-cold beer out in the yard. And then I'd run back and forth and get beers or sodas, whatever, and somehow the dimes and nickels next to their piles would end up in my pocket. Kind of cool. So anyway, I know those two things were going on. So I'm listening to the ball game. The Cubs are winning. They actually took two that day, which is shocking, I know. But uh, about 3.15 in the afternoon, a radio broadcast broke in. And they said that a human had landed on the moon. What? Yeah, human beings had landed on the moon. About 3.15 Chicago time, and then they went back to the ball game. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, evening's rolling around, we're getting ready for the poker game. The Cubs sweep two from the, from the Phillies. Ron Sano, the best third baseman in baseball ever, goes four for four. My day's doing good, and everything's looking pretty cool. And I keep looking up to the sky going, really? The guy's on the moon? Because prior to that, it was all Buck Rogers stuff, wasn't it? It never happened. So it starts getting a little darker, and all the aunts and uncles are coming over. The aunties would go play pinochle in the living room, and the uncles would play the hardcore poker in the little dinette area. So I'm running back and forth and running back and forth, getting these beers, and I got the cold beers on my chest, and it's running down my pants, but there's coins in there. It's all okay. And I remember just about 10 minutes to 10, Chicago time, I go running in the house, and I skid on the floor because it's wet from all the stuff on me, and I come right into the, net, into the dinette, and I hear Uncle Frank LaJoy from the old country say, oh, I can't believe it. Look what they've done. And I turn to the Sears TV, and this is what I saw. Step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Oh, that looks beautiful for me. Do you remember this? It was huge. I'm like, could they play it again? We didn't have VCRs, repeats, and then when they went to the news that night, it was incredible. And here's what happened for me. My life was changed in a moment. All our lives, were we had done something as a species no one had ever done before by a three-step process. Somebody first had to think about it, like a million years ago, how do we get there? Somebody had to think about it. Then we had to talk about it. Then we had to do it. And we created that. When my Uncle Frank LaJoy said, holy cow, we did it, he never got past Chicago. But in his mind and in his heart and in his soul, he was there on the lunar surface, just like I was at 10. And my guess would be, a lot of you here today, that moment moved you in a direction. What I suggest to you, what we're here doing today, 
is creating moments. And I'm here to submit to you fully, with all validation, a, a, a lifelong suffering Cubs fan, which I haven't figured that part out yet, that somehow, some way, we create moments, and moments then in turn create us. And what we're being charged with today, as a group, all of you sitting here, all the speakers that are here, all these voices, that the challenges we face as a humanity are pale in comparison. We went to the moon, and then they came back. <laughs> they came back, and again and again, and they go up and down all the time now. And unfortunately, it's the 12th story in the news, which sucks. Because to me, just getting here in the plane was a miracle. <laughs> I wasn't on time, but I got here. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying to you all, really, in, in, in very short form, is that all of our lives are built on the moments that have created us, the good ones and the bad ones. They show us who we are and who we're not. And then we, in turn off, that create moments as well. And then we do the same more and more, and then it's called life. The bottom line is if you're lucky, you get just over 28,000 days to play on this little blue ball we call Earth. And I don't know if recognizing that step process of thought, word, and deed will add years to your life, but I guarantee you this, understanding that moments matter will add life to your years. Thank you very much.